Hi everyone, my name is Teodor Mitev and in this short lecture I will discuss the process of ideating possible directions for your digital artifacts. This is the fourth lecture in my series on digital artifact development following the lectures on thinking, observing and defining in which we discuss the production of a definitive problem statement. Reminder that these stages are part of a continuous developmental process. And so in the lecture on thinking, the first lecture in the series, we discuss conceptualizing a project. In the lecture on observing, we discuss finding, observing and understanding your users. And in the lecture on defining, we discuss the production of a definitive problem statement. So uh, in this lecture, we uh, discuss the ideation stage of your project development and this is the stage in which you generate a number of potential ideas for developing your actionable problem statement. So a reminder again that uh, we ended up the defining stage uh, with uh, the production of a actionable problem statement. And final reminder, the entire process is cyclical and operates as a feedback loop. You progress from observing through defining, ideating, prototyping and testing and then you close the cycle, close the loop as it were, by observing the results of uh, uh, the testing of your content, the, the stuff that you've produced, the stuff that you've made, and then you proceed to uh, iterate again through the entire uh, cycle. So uh, ideation is all about uh, generating a number of potential ideas uh, for the way forward, for the trajectory, of developing of your actionable problem statement. Now, before we proceed, a quick reminder of the way a problem statement is framed. And the defining ingredients of your problem statement are your uh, identified user needs, uh, the needs that you've identified uh, during the process of observation, um, the insights you've gathered about your users and around about uh, the larger context in which you will be operating, and the starter pack of your users, the specific frame, uh, which captures uh, who your users are, uh, what do they think about a number of different issues, how they behave, what do they wear, what do they consume, etc., etc., etc. As detailed, you remember, uh, you need to be as detailed as possible when it comes to defining your startup pack because it uh, operates as the basic frame from uh, based on which you are making uh, decisions when it comes to your users. So that being in place, in the defining stage, we uh, developed this uh, algorithm for producing a pro uh, actionable problem statement. And uh, that problem statement consists of uh, the starter pack. So your users, starter pack, need a verb. So this is uh, the specific actionable needs that you've identified that you can uh, target and uh, address with your project because, and here comes your actionable insight, which should be compelling. It should be leading to uh, something that uh, uh, is of a social utility to your users, right? Something that they can make use of. And if you recall, we ended uh, the previous lecture, the lecture on the defining stage, with uh, this specific uh, set of uh, operations. First, producing an uh, actionable problem statement. And second, asking, given that problem statement, how can I or how might we make something, right? So this is where your problem statement leads into a series of ideas um, on possible approaches, on uh, possible trajectories for development. So using that uh, opener, how can I or how might we make something? Let's jump straight into the beginning of the process of ideation. And uh, to put it quite simply, uh, you need to open up with this uh, attitude or, or, or this uh, approach where you use that problem statement to generate uh, as wide a spectrum of ideas as possible, ideally putting pulling it in uh, different directions. So what this means in practice is that you want to be producing a variety of ideas uh, and you need to be trying really hard not to evaluate them in this stage and I'll talk about this a little bit more down the track uh, but to simply generate as many ideas as possible 
um, and uh, you need to be trying to uh, pull them uh, pull that project statement in different maybe even unexpected or uncomfortable or uh, unpredictable directions which uh, will allow you to um, kind of gain a deeper understanding about the problem but also gain uh, ideally creative ideas for for how to move forward and this sounds quite trivial uh, sounds commonsensical sounds quite easy but actually in many respects this is probably the hardest part of uh, project development even though it is familiar pretty much to everyone in terms of notions such as brainstorming etc uh, etc et the hardness and the, the um, uh, steep learning curve here is associated with the fact that uh, you should be generating ideas but not evaluating them um, and again this um, is much harder than it seems uh, because we have this innate tendency to immediately second guess ourselves and to uh, immediately as it were dry run and test the ideas which we produce in our minds and filter them out as impractical or fantastic or undesirable etc etc a really well executed ideation stage does not evaluate the ideas that are being um, generated so aim for fantastical ideas aim for really uh, blue sky really uh, uh, impractical ideas right uh, it's not so important to think in at this stage uh, about uh, how am i going to actually do it in practice think in terms of how would it look meaning whatever it is that you are uh, going to be producing whatever it is that you're going to be making based on that problem statement uh, how would it look how would it sound how would it feel what kind of emotions would it generate um, do not think about the practical steps of production do not think of, about possible pitfalls um, this is a categorical no-no think in terms of your ideal scenario about uh, these possible uh, trajectories for development so at this stage you need volume uh, so go for a uh, uh, possibly large volume of ideas um, and I'll talk more about this in a second um, remember that in order to actually evaluate your ideas you need to you need testing and feedback and your initial testing and feedback can be something that you do uh, pretty much on your own in the, in the sense that you uh, once you have produced a number of ideas you can try and actually make them and see what it what will be involved in uh, making a very simple prototype uh, you might try and uh, gain uh, feedback from uh, uh, you know an, an audience close to you uh, this can be family members or friends who are just uh, uh, interacting and engaging with your uh, early prototype in order to give you an idea what is actually uh, practicable and in order to gain some sort of evaluation of those ideas but remember at the ideation stage which is the stage we're concerned with in this uh, lecture you go for volume you do not evaluate all right so let's look at uh, a few rules of thumb if you will that um, might be really useful in uh, the ideation of your digital artifact um, first i already mentioned that go for volume uh, set yourself a minimum of five ideas that uh, you you want to produce at this stage um, ideally go for more try and produce 10 for example um, remember you will be evaluating them down the track resist at all costs uh, the urge to filter out and evaluate your ideas here and uh, discount them as impractical undesirable etc etc right this is something that you will be doing at the prototyping and testing stages okay so that being said try and be visual right so we are construed because of uh, uh, literacy and because of the way our minds operate uh, in the current media paradigm to uh, uh, think in a very textual in a very linear way which uh, immediately uh, as a precondition filters out a number of possible um, ideas so in order to avoid that and to uh, open yourself to um, to more creative or more uh, or weirder or, or different uh, approaches try and be visual so give yourself as a as a uh, precondition that you will sketch you will illustrate you will uh, be um, non-textual about uh, your ideas right limit yourself to text only where uh, you 
absolutely need to have some sort of uh, textual description of, uh, of your idea and uh, try and illustrate it uh, no matter how impractical it might seem at first. Often students struggle with this because they tell thing, they say things like, uh, but I'm making a podcast series. How, how am I going to illustrate my podcast? So you can illustrate your podcast in terms of uh, uh, capturing the actual sounds and the actual f uh, audio uh, um, feeling, if you will, of uh, how your podcast will sound. Uh, you might illustrate it in terms of how you imagine the audience will listen to it. You might illustrate it in terms of the start pack that you, that, uh, you will be targeting. You might illustrate it in terms of the kind of uh, um, associative frame you will be generating uh, perceptually for your audience. Uh, there is a huge number of possible illustrations, even when it comes to uh, artifacts such as uh, um, uh, podcasts, for example. Which leads me to the next point. Try and make uh, a physical model of your ideas um, and again if your artifact is something such as a podcast or something such as a, a youtube uh, video series or something such as a website by all means try and make a physical model of that um, that this model does not have to be uh, modeling and simulating the finished uh, object uh, abstract object let's call it that way that you'll be producing it has to uh, in one way or another engage with the experience the audience will be having with uh, the content you will be making. So try and make a physical representation of your um, idea uh, when it comes to uh, how you imagine your audience will be engaging with it. It also helps if you get out uh, the obvious ideas out of the way first. So uh, normally how this works is you, uh, let's say, give yourself a task of producing seven ideas. Uh, about uh, possible developmental trajectories for your uh, digital artifact given your problem statement. And uh, an obvious idea comes in and uh, the first thing to do is to uh, jot it down, try and visualize it, uh, try and uh, make a physical prototype of how this idea would be experienced by your audience, how, uh, how it would look maybe, right? It should be tangible, it should be something that can be uh, tangled with. And then you put it aside and you move on into uh, less obvious ideas. Ideally, you should run out of obvious ideas. And this brings me to the final uh, point I wanted to make. Once you run out of the obvious and the commonsensical is where it gets interesting because uh, you should challenge yourself to have a completely blue sky idea. So a completely far out idea that uh, is, uh, let's say, weird or, or uh, turbo innovative or um, super weird, etc., etc. No matter how you want to frame it for yourself, the point is to, to really push the envelope when it comes to the, uh, the, the frame that you are positioning your digital artifact in. Even if, and uh, this is an important uh, aside, even if that idea doesn't lead you anywhere specifically and you don't uh, end up developing it, and of course, people rarely end up developing their really weird ideas, the point is that it uh, by going in that direction, you start seeing all your less weird idea, more commonsensical, more obvious ideas in a different light. Uh, and uh, as it were, it colors them in a different light. It, it allows you to uh, approach them in, in a better, more creative way, way if you will. Uh, also go for, uh, challenge yourself to go for uh, the beautiful or the wonderful or the splendid uh, et cetera, et cetera, the, the very desirable, right? D uh, depending on how you want to frame it, the point is that uh, try and uh, uh, develop an idea which is um, aesthetically pleasing, right? And this is its defining quality, right? So go for one idea which is really weird, really blue sky, and uh, also at least one idea which is entirely focused around the uh, aesthetic joy of the, of, uh, 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 of the experience of it, right? So uh, think in terms of beauty, uh, in, in terms of wonder. And again, this is one of those uh, directions which is uh, far easier to write and explain and, and far harder to actually put in practice because obviously beauty and wonder are uh, entirely subjective experiences. The point here though is that by pushing yourself in this direction, uh, you're opening yourself up to uh, all sorts of interesting approaches which are otherwise closed because we discount this as, as uh, uh, um, you know, 
um, something antithetical to an obvious slash commonsensical perspective. So um, even if you're working on a podcast or a website, think in terms of how you can make it more aesthetically pleasing. Think in terms of an idea that uh, will um, literally bring joy to your users. How can how can uh, you bring joy through whatever it is uh, whatever it is that you're making? Um, it might be that for some of you this would involve glitching uh, aspects of your content. Uh, for others, it might involve uh, changing the aesthetic or, or uh, bringing in a, you know a starter pack which is not otherwise uh, associated with this specific audience. That is the point, right? So push in that direction. Uh, remember, do not evaluate at this stage. Resist the talk cost, the urge to evaluate your ideas, generate ideas, go for volume. Now, with these rules of thumb out of the way, uh, some of you might be asking yourself, okay, but uh, what are the specific mechanics of generating ideas like that? So, um, there are many different uh, approaches, and you know, just a brief search online will find you hundreds upon hundreds of uh, uh, websites with suggestions on on how to uh, ideate and, and produce uh, creative outputs in this way. But um, I can recommend something as simple as simply asking uh, weird questions, right, which transgress the, the boundaries of the specific medium that you're working in. So questions such as how does this image series sound, right? So let's say you're doing stuff on Instagram. Um, what is the playlist for that specific uh, Instagram account, right? What kind of music is associated with this uh, with this image? Think in terms of transgressive making. Uh, so ask a question of the sort I just pointed out, and think in terms of what can be made here. So can uh, what would be the physical model of your podcast, or how would you dress for that specific uh, uh, podcast? Even though none of this is actually transpires through the medium, um, it's really important because it allows you to unlock. A deeper sense of associative uh, uh, chains um, forming that frame it allows you to unlock patterns that uh, you would otherwise take for granted and you won't be able to see right it kind of broadens your perception when it comes to a specific uh, direction and then when you ide ideate in this way a lot of those ideas that are being produced um, can be actually uh, quite informative when it comes to the trajectory that you end up picking for your development, even if the ideas themselves don't end up being produced. Another useful tool uh, when it comes to the ideation stage is uh, a concept known as design fiction. And there is a fantastic quote here that I uh, really like to use when I illustrate this to students. It comes from um, a design theorist and slash media theorist uh, called Julian Bleeker. Uh, and this is from his uh, piece called Design Fiction from Props to Prototypes where he uh, he frames design fiction as making the unreal seem real, even routine and plain. And uh, design fiction is really extremely useful when it comes to unlocking possible, um, let's call them idea vectors for development. Uh, you can start with a uh, um, fantastical object, right? a non-existing object, an unreal object, and then give yourself a challenge to make it appear real even though it's not going to be uh, real at the end, it's not going to be produced. The process of making it seem real, right? Making the unreal seem real, even routine and plain, uh, the process of inserting that fantastic object, that unreal piece of content or whatever, into a routine and plain environment where it will be used by an actually existing routine and plain audience, uh, is very revealing when it comes to possible directions for deploying res uh, less than real uh, objects. So design fiction as a process allows you to make uh, props, uh, allows you to make um, um, prototype objects which are obviously tangible and materialized but uh, are, are not exactly real. It's not, they are not exactly uh, something that will be produced down the track. They, as, as Julian Blicker again brilliantly flames, frames it, they live between fact and fiction and are both speculative and possible. Right? So they are, uh, are possible down the track. Why? Because you made them seem real, even routine and plain, but they are speculative because at the end of the day, uh, this is a, a fictional uh, object. Most importantly, in fact, crucially, they aren't 
specifications for making. These are not specific steps that I'll, I'll give you a breakdown of what is it you're going to make. They are specifications for imagining. So uh, these are specific uh, uh, steps uh, for unlocking um, the process of ideation. So Julian Blicker and his colleagues from the Near Future Laboratory, uh, which is a design studio that uh, uh, he chairs, uh, produced a design fiction card game, uh, you know, which uh, anyone can buy. And uh, for our purposes, um, uh, my student, uh, my PhD student Travis Wall has uh, developed that card game into a website, which you can follow on this uh, link. Uh, that's bit.ly slash two capital Z S R Q for R. And uh, this is a, a design fiction game, which uh, when refreshed, uh, randomly generates an object, a design action and an attribute. And the idea here is what you can see on the screen is uh, the object is a map, the design action is at humanity and the attribute is cloud enabled. So uh, the idea is that you, uh, you have to define an artifact uh, which would result from the combination of these three cards. Uh, so you, uh, you have a cloud enabled map to which you have to add humanity. And the challenge is to uh, write down how this object would work, uh, to, to give it a name, to position it uh, within a, a real, even routine and plain environment. You can uh, uh, create a starter pack for it. You can create a starter pack for its intended uh, routine and plain and everyday audience. Uh, you, you can try and imagine how it will be used, etc., etc. Uh, this is really helpful when it comes to um, uh, ideating your own projects. So I always strongly recommend for students to um, engage with the design fiction game and to, to go for a few rounds at least, and then start ideating their own project, trying to replicate the same process of uh, object design action attribute and uh, uh, producing uh, like we said already, at least five, hopefully even 10 different uh, um, ideas over a wide spectrum, right? Not following a specific developmental trajectory, but a wide spectrum of trajectories going for the obvious ones first, putting them aside and then going directly for uh, something which is blue sky, something which is beautiful, something which is weird, etc., etc. Importantly, and finally, when done right, the ideation stage is tremendous fun. So you should try and really enjoy it. Uh, you should uh, try and repeat the ideation stage. Uh, in fact, each time you're producing new content, uh, because uh, when uh, you normalize this as part of your developmental process, uh, content production is basically always fun. All right, that's it from me when it comes to the process of ideation. Thank you for listening and see you online.